In this video, we're gonna take a look at the single character and two character media blocks in the all new Adobe Captivate. So I saw a few comments on the user forums about the single character and more specifically, the two character media blocks that are available in the all new Adobe Captivate. And it got me to thinking about these particular media blocks and how they could realistically be used inside of Adobe Captivate. And I'm gonna share an idea that I have, a couple of ideas that I have with you today. Okay, so I think the assumption that many people have is that this some sort of magic that makes this just work a lot better than expected. So I have a blank slide here in this new project in the all new Adobe Captivate, and I'm gonna click on the add media blocks icon in the toolbar. And let's start off with a two character example first. Uh, what we can do of course is customize this. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is put a background image. So instead of just the solid background, I think many of you are doing something similar you're choosing um, an image background and perhaps you're looking in the assets panel or uh, asset store, if you will, and selecting one of these very highly detailed backgrounds here. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously that's going to look a little weird. You've got your characters up by the ceiling here. Let's even change the characters, see if that helps a little bit. Let's add uh, Angela here as an example in one character and we'll replace the second character with an image of David. We'll choose uh, one of his poses there. And let's say we're gonna continue with uh, maybe an infinite scroll type scenario. I'm not sure I would use that in this case, but in either case, this just looks very weird because they're up by the ceiling. Let's throw in the single character uh, block as well, just to give us a comparison here. So maybe Angela responds to what David says here, and we'll put an image of her, uh, you know, in this as well. So a couple of things, uh, even if you're looking at the bottom image of Angela, um, there's a chair right there. You can see my mouse at the top of a chair. Uh, she would be a very short person and obviously the scale is wrong here. Um, so I think the first issue that I'm going to point out is choosing a crisp, clear photographic background, I think is the first mistake here. So if I just click on one of the slides over here in the film strip, I got, of course, the image background. I can access that here and I'm going to replace this with... Um, in this case here, I have an image in mind that I think is more appropriate for such a scenario here. Still an office environment, but out of focus and so blurry that you can't tell how large any object in that environment is. And I think that deals with part of the problem. The other issue, of course, is again, even with that blurry background, it still looks like these guys are floating in space. So I think another thing that you can do to improve this is to edit these images and maybe crop them at the midsection. So let's try that first of all. I double click on the, this image of Angela here and I can use the crop tools to select, you know, maybe just from her midsection up and we'll press save here. We can also do that with David. We'll do that here. Um, I like to try to crop above like maybe a belt or pants. That way you're, you're just seeing his shirt here. Similarly, we can crop this second image of Angela here. And I think that looks pretty good. The other issue, of course, is that our word balloons are very different from the two person uh, to the single person here. And uh, unfortunately, the speech bubble I don't have the option to do like a deep copy of this, which would be nice, but it's just not available here. So instead I have to manually create these using, um, you know, using what's available here. So in this example, let's say 
We'll start with this red color here. I'm going to go and I'm going to copy the hex code. And just note that that's 84%. I'm going to go down to this item here. Get rid of the title. Get rid of the button. We're just going to have her saying something at this point. And we can choose that solid color and just paste it in here. And remember, it was 84. So it's a little bit transparent. Let's go back up here. Um, let's select our border. Um, copy that. And that's 100%. And we'll select here, I guess it's a different color, and that's 100% here. And the outline is around all the sides. So, and I, it looks like it's a little bit thicker, so maybe we'll make it five pixels. The other point too is that the, uh, the corner radius is quite different here. Here we have a pointed corner radius, and the rest look probably about 20%. So we can select this, um, this uh, word balloon here and if you choose this option different radiuses for each corner you can manually type these in so i'm going to just set them let's say 20 percent at the top the bottom left is the pointy one because that's where she's speaking from so we make that zero and then the other two are 20 percent so and i think it missed that let's do that or i did that wrong there we go. Took me a while to figure out that the bottom left was actually this one here. Be nice if that was labeled. So if Adobe happens to be watching this video, maybe you can do that for us. But I think that looks pretty good. The other thing you can do, of course, is when you're dealing with uh, the alignment and spacing on these, uh, you might want to lower the vertical padding and the same thing for the top one there. So it's just a little bit tighter and clear what those uh, those layouts are here. So this looks good to me. We've got a nice close-up image of our characters. Let's take a look at what it looks like on different views here. Um, a little tall and narrow on mobile phone view. One of the other things that you can do is uh, click on the actual speech card and adjust the padding for the speech card itself and that's going to make the speech card a little bit smaller um, so that it, you know it's not just this big long scrolling situation here probably don't need to adjust this one here and i think that's pretty good so again my suggestion would be for the uh the two-person call out you know again use that cropped um, image of the people so that we're not focusing on the fact that their feet are floating six feet in the air. And uh, again, use a background where you're not going to be focusing on how the characters don't line up with some sort of background. And I think that's going to help out a lot. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.